things are very different for young people now. Uh, a fight occurs, a punch is thrown, and instead of a, another punch being thrown and people going their separate ways, a gun is pulled out. King County and Seattle leaders are trying to stop youth gun violence with what they call 100 days of action. But tonight, a county council member says a major contributing factor is simply being overlooked. King 5's Maddie White has a look at the push to create more consequences for kids who commit crimes. Maddie? Yeah, that's exactly right, Greg, and more transparency about those consequences. New tonight, we're learning the King County Auditor has expressed interest in possibly adding to the council's 2025 work plan a full audit of their main diversion program for kids accused of crimes. Meeting and letting people off scot free for some serious crimes. Council member Reagan Dunn is calling the current consequences for King County kids accused of crime are deeply disappointing. And here's why. Remember this case up in Shoreline? A 50 year old woman allegedly saw 16 year old Jaden Taylor point a gun at a girl. But when she tried to intervene, she was killed. And he turned around and shot her three times in the abdomen and she died. Uh, on scene. What Dunn says is concerning is that Taylor had previously been referred to the county's diversion program called Restorative Community Pathways, but never showed up. That referral was required under state law. And a huge number of people are just ghosting the system, never showing up. And that information is not getting back to the prosecutor so that they can be recharged. Since 2021, King County taxpayers have given $16 million to this diversion program amid a push for keeping kids out of jail. We know detention is causing harm. We know detention is expensive. It is always the right time to do the right thing. It does not produce good outcomes. But here's the problem. Of the 889 teens referred to diversion, more than 36% didn't go. Of that group, the majority simply couldn't be located. What you're telling me is that a lot of these teenagers are not signing up for the program they've been referred to. Some people aren't signing up. Some people, and that's a big chunk, chunk of them, some people are signing up and then never finishing uh, their assignments. Those kids are supposed to be sent back to the prosecutor's office, but Dunn says in many cases, that's not happening. And that's why this program needs to be looked at with scrutiny to determine if any of it can be salvaged or if we should throw it back into the trash. I should mention that not all crimes are eligible for diversion programs, like bringing a gun to school, for example, and that most referrals and misdemeanors required by law to be diverted. My request for comment from Restorative Community Pathways has not yet been returned. I'm Maddie White. Greg, back to you.